بخش پارلمانی در مجلس اعیان انگلستان با حضور معاون ارشد وزارت خارجه فراخان نمایندگان مجلس اعیان لزوم اقدامات عملی و قاطع دولت انگلستان برای تأمین حفاظت مجاهدان در لیبرتی معاون ارشد وزارت خارجه انگلستان کشتار اول سپتامبر در کمپ اشرف را محکوم کردیم و برای محاکمه عاملان آن فراخان دادیم بارونس وارسی وضعیت حقوق بشر در ایران بخیم است ما مصمم هستیم آن را دنبال کنیم ما بیش از هشتاد تن از مسئولین نقض حقوق بشر در ایران را زیر تحریم اتحادیه اروپا بردیم لورد مگینس وزارت خارجه هنوز میگوید نمیداند چه کسی مسئول کشتار اول سپتامبر است با وجود سیستم کنترل ارتباطات انگلستان و آمریکا این حرف مزخرف و زشت است پنجشنبه گذشته در اجلاس رسمی مجلس اعیان انگلستان که با حضور معاون ارشد وزارت خارجه این کشور بارونس وارسی پیرامون بحران سوریه و وضعیت خاورمیانه برگزار شد اعضای مجلس اعیان به طرح سوالاتی پیرامون حفاظت مجاهدان اشرفی در زندان لیبرتی و پیگیری جنایت علیه بشریت در اشرف در ده شهریور پرداختند و خواستار اقدامات عملی دولت انگلستان شدند لورد کارلایل عدم حضور مقامات ملل متحد در لیبرتی را هنگام وقوع حملات موشکی یک افتضاح انسانی و حقوق بشری توصیف کرد و از معاون وزیر خارجه خواست که روشن و سریح به پارلمان اطمینان دهد برای حفظ جان ساکنان لیبرتی دست به اقدامات عملی خواهد زد بارون استرنر در این جلسه تاکید کرد که همچنان به اعتراضات خود ادامه خواهند داد بارون اسوارسی معاون ارشد وزارت خارجه انگلستان زمین محکوم کردن کشتار مجاهدان اشرفی در اول سپتامبر خواستار محاکمه عاملان این کشتار شد وی با محکوم کردن نقض حقوق بشر در ایران گفت برای تصویب قطنامه علیه رژیم تلاش کردیم و هشتاد تن از مسئولان آن را زیر تحریم اروپا بردیم Um, there are Iranian dissidents who are in refuge in Camp Liberty in Iraq. Um, they are persecuted on a daily basis. This week, they have been refused access by officials of the Iraqi government to medical prescribed um, uh, therapy. In the past, they've been refused access to communications, they've been refused access to water, They've had their defensive walls removed from around their premises. Um, there have been over 150 assassinations there. They have been unprote unprotected by the Iraqi government. It's absolutely clear that Prime Minister Maliki, for this purpose, is a client of the government and regime of Iran. And that is why the residents of Camp Liberty are not being protected. And I've heard their moving and genuine testimonies from individuals. Most of them are middle class, business and professional people, and they need to be treated on a humanitarian basis. And we are not doing so at the moment, and nor are many other countries. And it's, as a result, they have a complete lack of protection. Um, they are supposedly being looked after to an extent by the United Nations, but United Nations officials like McCavity are never there when critical events occur, and um, as a result, a humanitarian scandal has erupted. Um, I urge the Minister to declare very clearly to this House this afternoon that the United Kingdom is in the forefront of international efforts to save the lives of the residents of Camp Liberty and to give them safe haven elsewhere. Uh, the, if the Iranian regime has any interest in persuading us of its earnest in meeting our concerns over nuclear and other issues, surely the small question in quantum terms of the residents of Camp Liberty 
is one on which they could demonstrate their earnest at no risk to themselves and uh, gain the respect of the rest of the world for their change and their humanitarian approach. And I would ask our government to uh, use every effort to ensure that those unfortunate people are protected. Worse still is the fact that the FCO tells us that they don't know who was responsible. What bunkum at a time when GCHQ in cahoots with the United States probably knows what each of us here had for breakfast this morning. How can we, how can we stand here and pretend we have confidence in our own position? As for Iran, this is a very difficult matter and I was most interested to hear what the noble Lord Lord Lamont had to say about, uh, about that. Uh, in, in the debate today. But it does seem clear that the regime has been assisting the Syrian regime in the current crisis. The new president is allegedly more moderate, but the human rights situation in the country continues to be bad, with many public executions and the oppression of women. I and a number of my parliamentary colleagues uh, have been in contact with Iranian refugees in the UK. And there is an opposition organisation uh, uh, committed to democratic change uh, and led by a woman with an equality agenda. Groups of its members are, uh, are in UN protected camps in Iraq at the moment, Ashraf and Liberty. But unfortunately, because the present Iraq regime has links with the extremist uh, links, uh, I may say, with the Iranian government, uh, the members of the camps have been objected, subjected to harassment and in certain cases uh, there has been a violence in which some of them have been killed. A number of us protested about this at the time and we continue to do so and I know that the government has from time to time raised objections as to what is happening to these vulnerable people. But these people in the camps of Ashraf and Liberty are entitled to protection and I hope that our government will continue to, to press uh, the Iraqi and other governments on, on that issue. Um, asked, uh, I wanted uh, me to assure the House that we continue to raise the issue of uh, human rights uh, in Iran. I can give him that assurance. Uh, the human rights situation in Iran remains dire and we're determined to hold the government to account. We frequently release statements condemning the human rights situation in Iran. Um, and uh, have led action uh, by uh, the international community on these issues. We've designated over 80 uh, Iranians responsible for human rights violations under EU sanctions, and we've helped establish a UN special rapporteur on Iran and human rights and lobbied for the adoption of hum uh, a human rights resolution. Uh, the noble Lord, Lord McGuinness, uh, the noble Baroness Lady Turner, my noble friend, Lord Carlyle um, uh, spoke about uh, Camp Ashraf. We condemn the killings of Camp Ashraf in Iraq uh, on the 1st of September. We've called for the government of Iraq to investigate this deplorable attack and to bring those responsible to justice. The UN has also called on the government of Iraq to undertake a criminal investigation and to make its findings public. Uh, I'm, I'm grateful to the Minister and I, I promise I won't interrupt her for long. But, but uh, can, can I suggest to her that Putting the onus on the Iraqis to investigate the killings in Camp Ashraf is a little bit like setting the fox into the chicken house to count the chickens.